What is going on Diablo 2 fans, Dabrunski here. In today's video, I just want to do sort of a talking headpiece covering all of my final thoughts for patch 2.4. The reason why I wanted to make this video is because I have covered in other dedicated videos, I've spent time going over the patch notes, talking about how I think X change is going to affect this in the game. Then I kind of transitioned to testing everything on Twitch. So I have 200 plus hours of all the different build testing live on Twitch. So again, if you guys ever want to participate in some of those streams, I got the link for my Twitch channel in the description below. But then I kind of made videos covering each individual build, tier list rankings and whatnot. But I haven't sort of addressed my overall thoughts on all the different seven character classes, room word changes, new level 85 areas, mercenary changes, as well as miscellaneous quality of life kind of fixes or improvements. So gonna do a quick video kind of talking about everything in general. Again, I will have timestamps in the description below. So if you guys want to navigate between certain segments, they're there for you guys to use. So please take advantage of them. But I first want to jump into talking about the assassin. So in general, martial arts has largely been improved. The way that the skills now release in different stages, finishing moves always hit and the ability to teleport everywhere with dragonflight and the kind of buffed improvements to attack rating. Martial arts sin is Way better than what it was there's also some really cool claw weapons that we can actually explore like different options whether it's maybe plus three to claws of thunder in a greater talent base rule plague so you have a chance to proc lower res and then get higher plus skills than what you could with other traditional setups so i do really like those changes but the big standout here for me is that i think the blade skills are super subpar they're clunky to use and they're heavily tied to attack rating. And I really think that Blade Sentinel is horrible. So the suggestion I would have to sort of improve this build is to make attack rating less dependent on it because why can you lay down like multiple lightning sentries and a death sentry? There's no AR issue there, but then as soon as we jump to Blade Fury and Blade Sentinel, attack rating is tied to it. So I don't like that. And I think that if they could just change the way Blade Sentinel worked, so instead of just encountering a cluster pack of monsters, dropping Blade Sentinel on the other side and then just shooting it back and forth and it kind of pings in this this awkward clunky radius back and forth. That's horrible. Why not just maybe change the way the AI of the skill works? So something like Chain Lightning. It hits like 20 targets. You shoot it out and it just pings between the different targets. I think that'd be a better way to make the build a little more viable. But in general, Martial Arts, or excuse me, in general, the Assassin is in a really good place. Martial Arts is really good. Traps has been improved. Fire has been buffed a little bit. Blade skills are horrible. That's kind of like my quick summary of the assassin. Now moving on to the Necromancer. I don't think a lot has changed with this class and that's because it was already in a pretty good place. They tried to improve Blood Golem and Fire Golem a little bit, but I just think that Clay Golem and Iron Golem is just too good to use. So they're just kind of like the ugly stepchild or the black sheep or whatever you want to call it. There's people aren't going to use them. Mages are blah, 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 blah. Eh, whatever you want to call it. Mages are just not that good. I did suggest kind of the idea of linking synergies between Fire Golem and Blood Golem. So if you force yourself to use 20 air points into summon mages, 20 air points into Blood Golem, and then 20 air points into Fire Golem, and then if you put 20 air points into lower res, you're not left with a lot of extra skill points to play with. So it kind of locks you into playing mages only, would make them a little bit stronger, and provide you with a different build setup because you have your sort of standard skeletons revives or you could go purely focused on mages so i think that would be a good improvement they did make a change to the skill weaken made it a little bit more viable but amplify damage to crap in lower res of the kingpins or curses for the necro unless they significantly nerf those which i think would the necro community would revolt you're not going to use the other curses so i just think the, those specific curses are so good you're not going to use anything else so kind of similar to the golems but overall the necro while not a lot has changed i think it's in a better place Moving on to the Barb. Massive improvements have been introduced for the Throw Barb. I think the Throw Barbarian will be the new kind of end game sort of kingpin setup with the chance to pierce extra damage and you can now replenish quantity with Throw Mastery. Eth Lacerator and Eth Warstrike is an amazing damage DPS dealing setup. Like it is better than Frenzy Barb, Whirlwind Barb, Leap Attack Barb. I just think it's the new kingpin build. They did make some changes to Leap Attack. The AI has largely been improved. And they even added a tiny little radius, sort of like a ring of damage when you land. But the damage on that is a joke. I think at level 40, it's like 400 damage. So while they're on the right track, they either need to massively buff the radius of that and buff the damage or maybe apply like a bigger stun effect, like Warcry or something. Anything to make it a little bit better, but they're on the right track for sure. Blade Mastery changes are cool. Might open some interesting options like a Flesh Ripper Barb setup for Ubers. So I do think that's cool. Warcry and Frenzy have been improved. Grim Ward is a pretty cool skill as well. I just wish they would get rid of the 
flee on it just like please remove that but overall barb's in a better place i personally hate the barb i've been super open about this it's my least favorite character class but i would consider rocking an endgame throw barb setup and moving on to the sorceress this has probably been the least changed character of all of them i could think that nova is in a lot better place it's definitely an endgame setup. Hydra is really good boss sniper. Fire skills in general are a lot better because of the new level 85 areas. So you're not as restricted in where you can farm. So I think that's all good improvements. I just really wish Frozen Orb would receive some love. I just think that if you take into consideration the new changes, so you have different Hydra, Meteor, Fireball options or Hydra Enchant options. With the Lightning Sorceress, you can play around with Nova, Nova Thunderstorm, your additional Lightning setup, or Nova and Nether Hybrid. Cold, I really do think you're still kind of stuck with that Blizzard Ice Blast kind of setup. They did make some improvements to the global cooldown between different skills, so you can do some interesting stuff like sort of teleport, throw a Frozen Orb, then throw a Blizzard, but I genuinely think that it's just more cost-effective use of your damage, or not, it's just better DPS. That's a better way to explain it. They just use Blizzard and Ice Blast. I just think throwing that extra skill and kind of like cycling through them doesn't really do much. So I would like to see Frozen Orb either buffed in its damage or maybe it's cooldown removed, something like that. I just wish it would get a little bit extra love because I think all of the other skill trees, there's different multiple hybrid options. And then we really just have kind of like a subpar Frozen Orb. We're going pure Blizzard. So I would like to see Frozen Orb changed. But I mean, Sorceress was always in a good place. So there's not really a lot that she needs. And moving on to the Druid, a lot of changes. Summon Druid is good now, it's viable. I don't think here endgame it's that crazy. Like I had Beast, Pride Mercenary, Might Or Mercenary, Perfect Summoning Skillers, and I tried also Reaper's Toll Mercenary. It's okay. Definitely with all the summons now, it's way better than what it was before, and I could even kill many Ubers with it. I just don't think it's insane. The IS changes for shapeshifting, the weapon calculation changes, I think are a large improvement. You can now use different weapons that before were horrible and you would attack super slow. You can now reach faster IS framed with them. So things like Eth Earthshaker, Eth Ribcracker, Eth Reaper's Toll, Zodrons all work really good now. Even Eth Windhammer with a Zodron works really good. Same goes for like, that's for the Werewolf and the Werebear. The Maul Bear, it's an unstoppable slow force, if that makes sense. You can do Ubers, no problem. You can get through everything. Slow clear speed, but kind of fits in with sort of the fantasy that they're trying to shoot for. The Fire Druid is okay. I just think it's a more awkward build to play than Fireball. That's just my opinion. I would just like to see all the cooldowns removed, period. I know they removed them independently of each other, but I just think that you want to just spam your Fisher a bunch, but you can't, but you can shoot like a 15k Fireball infinite amount of times. I just wish they would in general get rid of the cooldown for all the skills for the Fire Druid. But in general, the Druid's in a better place. It's no longer like a Wind Druid or Fear Druid only. There's a lot more different viable options. That's kind of one thing that I do think there's a lot more hybrid options as well. So Fury getting combos or Fury Cyclone Armor combos or being in werewolf form, having a Druid army. There's a lot of different options to play around. But moving on to the Amazon. Plague Javazon is better than what it was, but I really think you're just restricted to cows, pits, and trav for being like the only decent areas to run this character. And I think that in all those locations, with the exception of Travancol, a standard Javazon is better. So leg Javazon better than what it was, but I just have a hard time wanting to play it when there's the Javazon as an option. And personally, I love the Boazon changes, especially the physical damage changes. We've had the same Boazon for 20 years. It was a super high investment character that, in my opinion, struggled late end game. I do think that the changes, it's now has more appropriate damage for the crazy expensive gear that typically end game Boazons use. So I do like those changes. I know it hurts PvP, but I just think that there's going to be more people playing PvM. We've had the same Boazon for 20 years, so I do like the changes. Now, the Fire Boazon has been largely improved. I just think it's subpar to the Freezing Arrow in general just because of that cooldown. I don't understand why you can spam a skill infinitely that freezes monsters completely in tracks, but you can't spam Immolation Arrow. I don't really understand the difference there, but Fire Boazon is better. And moving on to the Paladin. The Foden is going to be the number one. It's going to be the most popular build. 100%. It's not as reliant as Teleport as the standard Hammer did, works better with budget gear, and has better AoE, in my opinion, than the Hammer did. The only place that the Hammer is a little bit better is very high difficulty settings or end game gear. The damage is a little bit better, but Bowden will be the most popular Paladin build, I can promise you that. And then they did walk back some of the offensive war changes, which I think is a plus. Holy Fire is a bit better. Will Dream Paladin's a bit better. I question why there's no love for Holy Freeze. Why doesn't it get a little bit of a damage buff? But in general, Paladin is in a really good spot. Now moving on to the mercenary changes. Some of them are really good and some of them are kind of meh in my opinion. Starting off with 
the Act 1 Rogues, I do think they're a lot better. The new skills that they get, Exploding Arrow and Freezing Arrow, damage buff that they got, and the fact that you can now use Amazon Bows and they receive damage from those plus kills is a large improvement. But I think that they still need a little bit more damage. I just have a hard time using an Act 1 Rogue Merc over an Act 2 or the new Act 5 Frenzy Mercenary. So one way that I think you could address the damage issue is in Normal, they can only shoot Cold Arrow or only shoot Fire Arrow. And then in Nightmare and Beyond, they can only shoot Freezing Arrow and they can only shoot Immolation Arrow. I think that'd be a good way to adjust the DPS on them because when they alternate between a regular shot, Cold Arrow and Freezing Arrow, or a regular shot, Fire Arrow, and then Exploding Arrow, really kind of halts the DPS on them. So I think that could be an easy way to make them a little bit more viable. Act 3 mercs are okay. Enchant, Static have some semi-viable use in Normal and Nightmare, but I would never rock these for an endgame setup. I just don't really see what a lot of people that think these Act 3 mercs are great. I just don't see it. And finally, the Act 5 Mercenary, the Frenzy Mercenary, I think is the new Kingpin that rivals the Act 2 Mercenary in a lot of scenarios. There's a lot of different dual-wielding weapon combinations you can explore. Things like Lawbringer for Sanctuary Order and Decrep Procs, Eth Head Strikers. You could rock like Last Last Wish and Kingslayer for uber setups. The Act 5 Frenzy Mercenary can actually survive Uber Tristram, so you now have a viable mercenary that you can tag along with a smiter to do ubers. So I think that's amazing as well. Really like the changes. I just think they could go a little bit further with Act 1 and Act 3 personally. Now, rumor changes in general, for the most part, I don't think they had that much of a meta shifting impact. I have made individual videos covering the different rune words. Things like Obsession, I don't think is a very good rune word. It's good, but I don't think it's appropriate to the Zod cost compared to like Hodo Spirit, etc. I think probably the two biggest rumor changes, flickering flame for fire builds and then plague for poison substitute builds. So like poison jabs on, rabies, that's an improvement. I do think though that changing some of the rune words in the bases that they can use is a meta shifting impact because you can now rock like infinity in an Amazon spear and then run around lightning strike and charge strike. That was a cool meta shift from just changing the bases, which I do want to talk about in general I think that a way to easily shift some meta is by just allowing different rumors and different bases. So imagine insight into crystal sword. You could rock like an energy shield sorceress with insight into crystal sword, maybe an infinity mercenary and they fix mana burn. You could rock beast and a sword for an act five frenzy mercenary. Imagine last wish and beast. And then you rock mist on your boson. That could be all three end game damage dealing auras at the same time. Or maybe grief and bows, the IS deadly strike, the way the damage works, pair that with Freezing Arrow, it could maybe make an Act 1 Mercenary a little bit stronger. I think there's a lot of possibilities if we explore being able to roll rumors of different bases. So I do think that's something that I would like to see explored in future patches. As far as the set changes slash upping sets goes, there's not too much to talk about. I mean, I did explore some of the changes, kind of like the damage buffs and added Deadly Strike to the BK set is cool. Upping sets might actually on paper seem very cool, but I don't think there's a lot of endgame options for upping sets outside of maybe like Alder's Boots for kicks in or maybe Alder's Weapon for a little bit more damage. Maybe the Death Set Death Glove combo for Cannot Be Frozen Crazy Poison Res might be a cool kind of two-piece set you could up. But overall I don't think there's a lot in that regard in terms of like what you can do with the sets. I would like to see all of the endgame sets minus the Talrasha set buffed a bit so IK, Nats, Mavs, Griswold's set, etc. It would be cool to see those be a little bit stronger and different alternative endgame choices to like Grief and Fortitude or Enigma or Chains of Honor, etc. I think that that would add some extra diversity too if they chose to buff those final sets a little bit. Now moving on to the new level 85 areas, I think a lot of them are very largely balanced like appropriately. Some of them are S tier like the Arachnids Lair or Stony Tombs are amazing. A lot of them seem catered to fire builds so areas, builds that previously couldn't farm too many locations you now have viable spots so i really do like that some of them are a bit of a joke like the underground passage level two that's a joke in my opinion but overall i think they made some pretty good changes now in terms of the final section here i want to talk about it miscellaneous quality of changes and stuff i would like to see in the future i do want to point out that i hope that once ladder drops the devs do get a bit of a break because they have introduced a ton of changes so we went from nothing changed in diablo 2 for 20 years to the massive patch 2.3 where they fixed a bunch of bugs, quick cast has been introduced, then we had the first version and second version of patch 2.4 with new different build options, changes to some set items, new room words, etc. So a lot of it's really good. I do want to say that in the future though, I would like to see some stuff like, again, endgame sets explored a little bit. I would like to see new rumor bases. I think that opens up some more opportunity as well as some small kind of 
standard ARPG quality of life loot filter. I feel like that should just be in the game. I think it's almost a crying shame to have such a good looking game cluttered with so much loot. I would love to see a loot filter, love to see a currency tab, and I would love to see some additional stash tabs as well. Even with the three shared stash and the one personal, I still find myself doing the inventory Tetris crap that I feel like you shouldn't be doing in a AAA game like Diablo. And like, there's no way we'll see that in Diablo 4, so it would be cool to see that dress in Diablo 2. But I do want to say in general, some of the quality of life changes they've made, like shift clicking potions from your belt to your stash, vice versa. The player count remaining static for when you cycle new game, that's great for single player. They've fixed so many long withstanding bugs, like the fire enchant nightmare bugs, so that's great. But I would love to see mana burn bug fix, like please just fix that. But overall, I think they've done a fantastic job and I do want to give them credit that they've done an amazing job of listening to the community. So whether it's content creators, Reddit, maybe D2JSP, I don't know how much time they spend there, but they're listening to everybody's feedback. So when I receive some of those comments like, oh, they're just listening to DB, DB is an idiot or whatever. That's fine, but they don't entirely listen to only a content creator. They're listening to everybody. And I think that that is steered Diablo in the direction for the better. Again, let me know in the comments section below if you guys agree, disagree, or if you think I missed anything major to cover. Any feedback is good as long as you're not a dick. And if you did enjoy this video, if you could throw a like on it, that'd be awesome. Help spread it through YouTube. And besides that, guys, I will catch you on my next video or live stream. Peace out.